أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Today is the lesson on Islamic belief This is the resurrection Ma'ad The lessons are extracted from the lessons on Islamic belief by Dr. Muhammad Ali Shamali Alhamdulillah He had given me the permission to be able to extract from his book and give short lectures on them بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم these classes have been extracted from the book Lessons on Islamic Belief by Dr. Muhammad Ali Shamali. These lessons here are a brief overview of this book and I highly recommend getting this book for additional information. This book I personally will be getting again for each of my children and I believe that these aspects of our religion are crucial and fundamental to their education. If anyone is interested, I am providing links at the end of this series of more in-depth discussion on the book with Dr. Muhammad Ali Shamali, which is found on YouTube. Resurrection, or Ma'ad. In Quran, the belief in God as the one creator of the world and the belief of resurrection are the main beliefs of every divinely revealed religion. In Quran, Surah 3, Ayat 114, they believe in God and in the last day. This ayat shows the belief in God and the belief in resurrection go hand in hand. These two, along with the belief in divine prophethood, are seen as the basic principles in any type of divine religion. In principle, we do not find any difference in each of the prophets' teaching about resurrection. In Quran, we see its uniqueness and its descriptions such as rewards and chastisements, the description of the last day, the questioning in the grave, remembrance of death, heaven and hell, and the angels in charge of them. Outside of the Abrahamic religions, we do see that other beliefs believe in the life after death, such as the belief in reincarnation. In the minds of those who believe in this, they find it necessary to believe that the creation cannot be indifferent to man's deeds, and there must be some kind of consequences to people's actions in their life. According to Islam, man will go to the hereafter. He will be held accountable for his beliefs, morals, and practices. As well in Islam, we believe that one will be rewarded or punished after his death, and that there is no returning back to this life. Although main reward and punishment take place in the hereafter, it can be understood from the Quran and Hadith that the current world is sensitive to a, to a deed and that we may start to see the outcomes of the consequences of our deeds during this life. The Day of Judgment has been referred to many different terms in Quran and Hadith, such as the Day of Resurrection, the Day of Recompense, the Day of Reckoning, the Day of Regret, and the Day of Loss. One misconception that one may have is that the body when buried decayed and becomes nothing so even if God recreated their body there wouldn't be a resurrection that would just be another life or no life at all after we see that in Quran Surah 32 Ayat 10 to 11 they say when we have been lost in the dust shall we then be created anew rather they just believe in the encounter with their Lord. Say, you will be taken away by the angel of death who has been in charge with you. Then you will be brought back to your Lord. This is a misconception in itself because we do not believe that man's body is his identity or to be his reality since the human spirit is man's reality. We believe that the spirit never dies even after departing the body. It is continued spirit that ensures the resurrection of the same person, not his physical body. In the above, there is no mention of annihilation or obliteration. Man's whole reality is simply taken away and preserved until an appointed time. This concept of death is expressed as being taken away. Another ayat in the mysterious and closeness relationship to death and sleep. The way we sleep, and then dreams, especially true dreams, and then we awake after, it deserves great attention. 
Quran and Surah 39, Ayat 42 God takes the soul at the time of their death, and those who have not died in their sleep, then he retains those for whom he has ordained that and releases the other until a specific time. There are indeed signs in that for people who reflect. A few things that we can see about the above ayats are, one, as it is an expression of the weakening of the relation between the body and the soul for a specific amount of time. Number two, there is a cutting of relationship between the body and the soul when we die. Number three, our soul go or pass through certain spiritual realms when we sleep in which we may witness true facts. Number four, death is like a very deep sleep where our souls are received and retained but certainly not ob obliterated. In Quran, death is not a destruction or an annihilation. It is simply a transition in the other world into the other world. It will be a better position than the material world, and that we will be able to communicate with the angels and the comprehended realities far beyond our capabilities during this life. Barzak. The word Barzak means interval, barrier, or border between two things. Barzak is a place where the human spirits will stay when passing this life and before the hereafter. In Quran, Surah 23, Ayat 99 to 100, when death comes to one of them, he says, My Lord, send me back that I may act righteously and what I have left behind. By no means. These are mere words that he says, and ahead of them is a barrier until the day they will be resurrected. It is a link to our world in that people where therein will be treated accordingly to how they lived in this world. The consequences of their deeds will form a bliss or suffering. This will happen immediately after death. Ayat's talking about this type of world is in chapter, or Sora 16, Ayat 32. Those whom the angels take away, away while they are pure, they say to them, Peace be upon you, and to paradise because of what you used to do. Another ayat is Sora 36, Ayat 23 to 27. He was told, enter paradise. He said, alas, had my people only known for what my Lord forgave me and made me one of the honored ones. And again, another ayat in Quran, Surah 40, Ayat 45, a terrible punishment besieged Pharaoh's clan, the fire, to which they were exposed morning and evening. And on the day when the hour set in, Veron's clan will enter the severest punishment. Imam Sadak explained the verse saying that the beginning refers to the punishment in the Barzakh. Since exposure to the fire in the morning and the evening and applies a dimension with time and we know that Barzakh does have time with its own laws of time proportionated to the dimension in it is in. However, the day of judgment is timeless, so the second part of the punishment refers to the punishment in the fire, in the hell. Questioning in the grave. In Quran and Hadith, we conclude that there are some kind of form of questionings and accountabilities immediately after death. The type of questioning will be limited and pertain to very <coughs> fundamental issues. Questioning related to our worship and according to our deeds will be reserved for the day of judgment. Resurrection. At the end of this world, a trumpet will be blown and everyone will die and everything in this world will cease to exist in their current material form. People will be resurrected and their eternal life will begin. In Quran and Surah 69, Ayat 39, sorry, Surah 68, Ayat 39. And the trumpet will be blown, and whoever is in the heavens will swoon, and whoever is on the earth, except whoever 
God wishes. Then it will be blown a second time. They will rise up, looking on. The only thing that is countable are our actions, morals, and our beliefs. We see in Quran, in Surah 26, Ayat 68 to 69, the day when neither wealth nor children will avail except him who comes to Allah with a sound heart. Behar al Nawar, a man named Taus al Yamani, narrated an encounter he had with Imam Sajad. He says that he was following the Imam and watching him at night while he prayed and circumambulating the Kaaba all night. In order to witness how the Imam worshipped and prayed, as it started to get late into the night and people began to leave the mosque until there were only a few people left therein, he heard the Imam saying, O oh Allah, there is, this is the time when the people have gone to their beds, and this is the time when the doors are open for those who ask. Then Imam continued his prayers and went into prostration. Tawus went to him and lifted Imam's head onto his lap and himself started crying, such that his tear fell onto Imam Sajjad. Imam asked, Who is this who has distracted me from my worship? Tawus identified himself and asked him, Why do you cry so much? It is we sinful people who must cry. Your father is Hussein, your mother is Lady Fatima, and your grandfather is the Prophet. Why do you cry? Then Imam looked at him and replied, Far from it, if only it were like that. Do not talk to me about who my father or my mother was. God has created heaven for whoever obeys him, even if it be a slave, and he has created hell for those who disobey him, even if it be a Qurayshi. Have you not heard Allah's verse in the Quran, and when the trumpet is blown, there will be no family ties between them on that day, nor will they be asked about each other. Surah 23, Ayat 101 By Allah, nothing will avail you tomorrow except your righteous acts that you send in advance. Prophet Muhammad was stated a very clear analogy, saying, This world is a farm in which you grow for the hereafter. We cannot harvest except what we have planted and grown. Embodiment of our actions Quran has stated that our acts will be embodied and manifested for us to see. Not only will we see their consequences, but also materialization of the acts themselves. Quran, Surah 99, Ayat 7 to 8. So whoever does an atom's weight of good will see it, and whoever does an atom's weight of evil will see it. Surah 3 and Ayat 30. The day when every soul will find present whatever good it has done, and as to whatever evil it has done, it will wish there will be a far distance between it and itself. Quran, Surah 18, Ayat 49 And they will find present whatever they had done. Surah 86, Ayat 9 On the day when the hidden things shall be manifest. <coughs> Good Deeds of the Faithless Common question asked is what will happen to those who do good deeds but do not have faith. Briefly, we can answer this question by saying that God, in His divine justice, will take into account every good deed depending on the people's good intentions. Some people may have the intention of getting closer to God, but there might be people whose intentions may not be to get closer to God, but may have been to help someone or be generous out of a goodness of their hearts or conscience. This is also appreciated, and God will, of course, treat them differently from people who not only did not believe, but acted wrongfully or were criminals. The internal heaven is not the only reward. reward. Barzak has its own rewards and punishments. There are many different possibilities. 
Whether or not God will send them to heaven, there remains a possibility as long as they believe in God and the resurrection and have sincerity in their actions, they may go to heaven. In Quran, Surah 2, Ayat 62, it states, Indeed, the faithful, the Jews and the Christians and the Sabians, those of them who have faith in God and the last day and act righteously, they shall have their reward with their Lord and they will have no fear nor will be grieved. Imam al-Khazm said, Imam Ali al-Islam is a gate from among the gates of guidance. Whoever enters through his gate is a believer. Whoever exits from his gate is a disbeliever. And whoever neither enters it nor exits it is considered among those who are still in hope for God's final judgment. It is a good concluding to hear that entering into heaven is not up to us to promise or to make a judgment about no is it something to be bartered as an accusation rather it is a pleasure of the lord of heavens that it is to be sought and the truth by which one may lead one's life for the sake of his good pleasure this is the youtube that you could write down and then you would be able to get the full lectures in full details by Dr. Muhammad Ali Shamali and you'd be able to understand it a little bit more in depth for those who are interested to watch it is lengthy it is in 10 parts but it is very good and also I do recommend the book if you're not able to watch the lectures and even if you do watch the lectures it's good to, to buy the book and be able to read it and it is a good enough book that um, even youth can read this too. Inshallah, this will end the lesson. Do make a special duo for the hastening reappearance of Imam Yisrael and those around the world being oppressed. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.